Got another redox titration question for you to try. I'm classing this one as hard. Um, not so much for the calculation, more to do with the amount of information you've got to process. And there's a couple of nasty equations that you've got to write as well. So best of luck with this one. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is construct an equation for step one, the oxidation of iron three oxide. So I've just highlighted the, the, the reactants and products, but the thing we've got to bear in mind is, if you look at the reactants, obviously you've got iron and oxygen in that, you've got hydrogen and oxygen in that, and you've got chlorine, there's no hydrogen in the products. So it's likely that we're going to need water in this equation. Okay, so there's the unbalanced equation. So first thing we'll do is look at the oxidation number change in the iron. So I've got two ions at the start, so it looks like I'm going to need a two there. The ions start now at plus three, so each one's at plus three. And the two ions produced are both at plus six. So that's a total increase of six. So if we move on to the substance that's been reduced, so that's the chlorine. So it's going from zero and it's going down to minus one. So basically we need the drop in oxidation number to be six as well. So it matches the increase for the iron. So if the oxidation number of the chlorines in this are zero, but it's minus one there, to get a total decrease of six, we need to generate six chloride ions, which means we need three Cl2s. So now I've sorted out the oxidation number changes. I don't want to touch the iron containing species or the chlorine containing species. I need to get the charges to balance now. So you can see on the right hand side, I've got two times two minus four minus plus six minus or 10 minus here, but I've only got one minus here. So I'm going to put a 10 in front of the OH minus. And all it's left to do now is balance the hydrogen. So we need uh, five H2Os. So moving on to part B now, we've got to write an ion equation for the formation of barium ferrate six in step two. So just have a look, quick look at step two. Student adds aqueous barium chloride to the resulting solution. So we've obviously got Ba2 plus Aq here. Got Cl minus Aq as well. Uh, the resultant solution in step one contained that FeO42 minus Aq. The precipitate of impure barium ferrate six forms, right? So that's obviously Ba FeO4 solid. So basically, this is our ionic equation here. We've got that reacting with that to form that. So moving on to part C now, we've got to identify the reducing agent in step three. So there's the equation for step three, and we've got to explain it in terms of electrons. Now, a quick way to identify a reducing agent in a redox reaction is just look for something that's been oxidized. So in this reaction, the I minus ions have actually been oxidized because their oxidation number's gone from minus one up to zero. And the way they've done that is they've donated electrons um, to bring about that change in oxidation number. And that is the definition of a reducing agent, an electron donor. So we've identified the reducing agent, I minus ions. So how do we explain that in terms of electrons? Well, if we look for the thing that's been reduced now, and that's technically the iron in the FeO42 minus iron, because it's at plus six here, and it's gone down to plus three in the Fe3 plus ion. So all I'm saying to explain why I minus is a reducing agent is that it donates electrons to the FeO42 minus ion. So moving on to the calculation now, we were told loads of information about the formation of this stuff here. But all the calculation wants us to do is work out what percentage of that 0.437 grams is that actual chemical. So it's been formed, it's been washed, it's been dried. It's then reacted with H plus and Ki or I minus ions. So it's basically this reaction here. 
that generates iodine which is then titrated against using this sodium thiosulfate of that concentration and that was the titer. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of thiosulfate used in the titration. So it's just concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. So that comes out of 2.64 times 10 to the minus 3. We're now going to half it to calculate the moles of iodine that were produced by that reaction. So they're the same, that's why I've um, highlighted them both in the same colour. So that's obviously 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3. Next thing I'm going to do is apply this mole ratio. So it's a 1 to 1 1.5 mole ratio. So we're going to divide by 1.5 to get the moles of this. So that's coming out at 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 4. We're now going to convert that into grams by multiplying by the MR of this. And to three significant figures, that comes out at that. All we're going to do now is put that over that 0.437 times 100, and that'll give us our percentage which to one decimal place comes out at 51.8%. So moving on to the final part of the question, we're told when the solution isn't alkaline, these ions react with water, and the reaction forms a gas with this density, so in other words, one cubic centimetre at RTP has a mass of that, and also there's an orange-brown precipitate. So the first thing we need to do is work out the formula of the gas and the precipitate. So I'll deal with the precipitate first. We've got iron, it's orange-brown, iron-3 hydroxide. So we'll deal with this gas now. So it has a density of this many grams per cubic centimetre. So if we think about the molar gas volume now, we know that one mole of any gas at RTP occupies a volume of 24 decimeters cubed or 24,000 centimeters cubed because we're working in centimeters cubed. That means that the molar gas volume will have that mass, which means that the MR of the gas is 32 grams per mole. So we just need to think of a gas that has that MR and the obvious one to go for is oxygen. So moving on to the equation now, so there's all the species in the unbalanced equation. I've gone for H plus ions because we're told it's not in alkaline conditions. First thing I'm going to do then is work out the oxidation and reduction processes. So I'll look at oxidation number changes. So the ions being reduced from plus 6 to plus 3. And the oxygen or some of the oxygen has been oxidized from minus 2 up to zero. So the way I'm going to deal with this is I'm going to put twos in front of the iron species. So that means that my total change for the iron is now six, which means I want the total change in the oxygen to be six as well. So to get that total change of six for the oxygens, remember each oxygen has changed by two. So I need that to be three O's on this side, each haven't changed by two. So I need a 1.5 in front of there. And then all I need to do now is sort out the charge. We've got no charge on the right. We've got an imbalance of charge on the left. So that gets sorted with a 4 in front of the H+. And finally, I need to sort out the atoms. Just check they're all balanced. So we'll look at the hydrogens. Um, 4 plus 2 is 6. 2 times a 3 there is 6. So the hydrogens are okay. Oxygen, 2, 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, 2 times the 3, so that's 6 O's there, and 1.5 times 2 is 3, so 9, yep, everything's balanced.